The Starfield Direct event happened more than a month ago now, and with all of the Reddit posts and YouTube videos, you would think, you would think, that we found every single detail that there is to find. But I feel like I've found two massive secrets that no one's talked about yet. And I've done my due diligence. I've looked through YouTube. I've looked through Reddit. I've looked through Google. I haven't been able to find these. And if I haven't found them, I bet no one else has been able to find them as well. So we're going to talk about these two massive secrets along with several other details and a few mistakes right after the intro. Welcome to Starfield Signal, your place for everything Starfield. I know you're here for those two massive secrets, so let's just dive right into those. We'll cover everything else afterwards. Okay, for our first massive secret, this is at timestamp 4257 in the Starfield Direct. We see this uh, little clip of somebody walking through an outpost, and there's lots of little things uh, here, some equations and, and math and science on the board. But the thing I want to point out is right here. This is Starlocked. I'll blow this up in post for you, but again, I haven't seen anyone talk about this. This looks to be like a mini game, an in-game mini game that is designed for Starfield. And if you look really close again, I'll try to zoom in and post here. You can see the different factions on here. I think that's the Free Star Collective, the Crimson Fleet, and then over here we have the United Colonies. Um, I thought that maybe this right here was the game board but it looks to be more like a little Zen garden type thing. I forget exactly what those are called. Please excuse me. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff over here, but for now, that was the big one that I found that I think, you know, this looks to be like a mini game, right? Has uh, the factions in there. Looks to be something that we could do. Um, I don't know exactly what this would look like, but this is some sort of board game, the equivalent of a board game in Starfield that... If they went through the trouble of designing this, surely we can play this. I think that is really cool. Okay, so that's massive secret number one. Massive secret number two, let's move on to timestamp 2751. This is uh, the section where we've come into the star yard. It's talking about that. And uh, we're kind of walking through the halls. And right here is this poster. Nothing particularly special about it at first glance, but again, I'm going to zoom in and post and you can see that hand that's reaching out. This looks to be like a, you know, like a motivational poster type thing. But you can see the hand that's reaching out is not what looks to be like a typical human hand in a spacesuit. This looks to be like a cybernetic prosthetic. Now we have seen a glimpse of this in in some uh, in some concept art that was released back at the end of last year, I believe in one of the, I think in the Neon City little feature they did. Um, but other than that, we have not seen any NPC or any other evidence of cybernetic prosthetics. And this is just another piece of evidence towards that. A lot of people didn't give much credence to that very first concept art because that's concept art, right? A lot of that stuff is drawn and created even sometimes before, you know, proper, a development happens sometimes it's it's even before uh, alpha that, that all that stuff gets started so um to see this in an actual build of the game running and that that art you know is consistent it has persisted into the development of the game i feel like that gives us a strong indication of possibly a little secret that we haven't seen yet in gameplay or in an npc that we could have cybernetic prosthetics in game very cool let me know if you already knew about those two massive secrets that I came across, but for now, let's go ahead and dive into the other details and a quick shout out to our Discord community. They actually helped me find a lot of these, and if you're looking for a good place on Discord to connect with about Starfield, then uh, we invite you to join there. You can follow the link in the description or just search for Starfield in Discord and we'll come up. I actually want to come back first to this scene we were looking at earlier because there are a lot more there is a lot more stuff in here um right here we see what could be some sort of cybernetic prosthetic um it doesn't look so much like that that i think that's you know actual evidence to support the other big massive secret but it looks like something <laughs> that could be also we have a basketball over here in in a glass this is in some sort of you know glass case on display 
It would be cool if this was signed by a popular NBA player from our time or a WNBA player. I think that would be a really neat little Easter egg for us. Um, but the cool stuff that I think is really neat that a lot of people enjoy, look right here on the back of our, of our player character. We have some stickers here. And one says Space Trucker and the other says Carrier. Now, I know a lot of people have been saying that they wanted to build some sort of space trucker, you know, character and do the trade routes and all that stuff. And that's how they want to make money. I don't think we've seen anything official in um, in Bethesda marketing or in game yet that have, kind of uses that term space trucker. So that's cool that we see that sticker there uh, kind of uh, alluding to the fact that, yes, that is a possibility. OK, here we are at timestamp 1152. We are at the Red Mile. Um, we've just come in and a lot of people have speculated that since it kind of shows all these things here like run, 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 run Red Mile, uh, that this could be Starfield's take on The Running Man, the show from the movie The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and that was a really cool action sci-fi movie. I love that one. And then, um, oh, shoot, there was a, a total recall are some of my favorite Arnold movies from that era and uh, really great if you want to go check those out. But a lot of people have speculated that, hey, this looks to be like some sort of casino where you could come and play games. And uh, yes, again, if you zoom in with this 8K footage, you might be able to see it on 4K as well. But if you do use the 8K footage, you can very easily see that over here, this is a blackjack game. And even up here, this is, uh, you can see the words poker kind of underneath the cards. And again, blackjack up on the top there. Uh, but just wanted to confirm that, yes, this does look like some sort of casino. These also may be some mini games. Uh, but I know this uh, was a little bit more common for people to notice and speculate on. So I didn't include that as a, as a clickbait massive thing. Uh, just the other ones. If you're having a good time and enjoying the video, I would love for you to like this video. That helps other Starfield fans find our content. And hey, if nothing else, this could just be your little act of kindness you do today. Thanks. Here at timestamp 4238, we get a good look at um, kind of a, a an interactive map table. We've seen these a lot in Starfield. This particular one is in a star station, as they call them. Uh, we also have this in our ship. And I believe we've seen a similar table in Constellation's headquarters as well. Uh, but what I wanted to note here is, of course, it has lots of different measurements and, and lots of lots of info in here. I wanted to just note out specifically this, what looks to be like a grav map. And, uh, and this may allude to a way that we can navigate our star systems. Uh, it looks like some of these square sections are going to be uh, maybe easily navigatable space that has been explored and maybe the stuff outside of that is uh, non-navigatable space. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to say that, but I just found this interesting. And again, that they would go through the trouble of kind of making this. It probably has some sort of in-game, um, you know, it, there's something of significance to it in the game mechanics. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. We're back towards the start of the direct now and here at timestamp 311 we see uh, this indicator right here on our options surface map i don't believe we've seen the surface map in gameplay footage yet so that was of note again this one came directly from our discord thank you guys i believe it was uh, maybe spudman who called this out on there thank you spudman at timestamp 3522 uh, we see a lot of um, they're talking about creatures and and uh, animals on on the different planets we we see here at tadachi uh, excuse me tadacha one that uh this they're scanning this creature and it actually lets you know that the biomes that it's in mountains swamps frozen plains coniferous coniferous forest excuse me and savannah so that alludes strongly that the, the to the fact that tadacha one has most, if not all, of the different biomes that are going to be available in Starfield. I know uh, we've known that, that there are going to be planets and surfaces with multiple biomes, uh, but this is just a confirmation of that from the gameplay footage. And there were a few things that our Discord uh, server found and included in our little details forum uh, that I could not quickly find what the timestamps were for them. So please excuse this, but I do have some screenshots of this. And this specific one just shows that uh, as you're scanning planets, it does give you a, an individual biome 
scan completed percentage, which is nice for all of you completionists out there. You know, you're not going to have to worry or it's going to help you uh, kind of uh, isolate down. Okay, if I've only scanned 99% of this planet, where in the world do I find that extra 1%? It's going to kind of scale that down for you so you know which biome to actually look in to find that last uh, fauna scan or that last flora scan. So I, th I think that's really cool. The nice quality of life feature just right off the bat. At timestamp 603, we are in the Porma system and our star navigation um, uh, screen. And Porma 3 specifically gives us the information that it has a 2.01 gravity. Um, this probably means that there are going to be some gravitational effects on us since uh, we've seen in gameplay and through the through the, the demo, through the, the direct, that low gravity will offer you some benefits as far as jumping through through larger areas of space um, that higher gravity could potentially have some negative effects as well or maybe some positive effects if you're really clever i'm interested to see what people do with that at timestamp 3217 we actually get a really good look at the starfield controller that they've designed for this and i did actually get one of these it is really great build quality i'm not trying to sell it you know lots of people think oh you don't need it it's going to function exactly like a normal controller. There are no special buttons or special features on here. It's just the theme. Um, but a lot of people have been wondering what all of the abbreviations are for. So I thought I would go through that. And I'm about 90 to 95% sure of all these. And a quick note about all of these abbreviations. These are all kind of geared towards uh, controlling your ship. So it's not necessarily for controlling when you're on foot, out in the planet, exploring. It's mainly for the design factor is to kind of make it feel like you have your ship controller here, which is really cool. So first up here, we scan. That's how we scan our planets. Uh, for flying, we have our throttle. Uh, this is power distribution is what this stands for. So remember in the direct when they were talking about a distributing power between your shields, your weapons, or your engines, or your grav drive, this is where you will control all of that. Uh, going from left to right, we come over here, we have our camera. So this is going to probably switch you from third person mode to first person mode and then you have your data menu right here right here rcs this has been kind of a point of uh, of conversation not necessarily disagreement but a lot of people have speculated on what this means what i'm about again about 90 to 95 percent sure this means is reaction control system that's a common uh, thing in um, in spaceship games this means the smaller thrusters, not your, your main engines, but the smaller thrusters that help you kind of um, specifically there for landing a lot of times. And so to, to kind of make small adjustments left or right or up or down to kind of help you land safely. This will most likely also contribute towards your, you know, flying out in space, making subtle movements, helping you maneuver during combats or, or as you're, you're flying through asteroid fields, things like that. So it's just another uh, part of your of your maneuvering system as you fly your starship. Over here, TGT stands for targeting. Uh, you can probably cycle through different targets that are on screen here, whether you're scanning or whether you're you know, mining asteroids or whether you're in combat. Here, you can lock, obviously. And uh, GRP2 just stands for group. I'm unsure of what the two means. I'll, I'll confess that. Uh, I'm not sure if it means you can have up to two groups, but what group means in context of, of space sims and, and space flight, uh, flight games is you can have different groups set for your weapons or your tools. Um, so if you want, um, you know, you want your torpedoes ready to go, then you can have those assigned to a group so you don't have to stop, pause the game, move, move your lasers out for your mining and move your, move your torpedoes back in or your missiles for, for combat. You can just have those automatically assigned to a group. That's what that's for. And then B just says exit down here. So probably just like a cancel or an exit out of this menu. Okay. So hopefully that wasn't too elementary, but just, I know I've seen a lot of conversation about that. Just want to clarify some of those. The next thing we'll take a look at is another screenshot. Uh, I am not uh, well versed enough in computer graphics and processors and, and all of that stuff to give really any kind of uh, co commentary on this, but I at least wanted to put it up on screen. If you haven't seen this, this is just AMD's kind of marketing for what they're saying. Hey, here's the best uh, you can get as far as a performance on Starfield. And then they kind of give like a, a better and a good. And so again, I'm not smart enough in, in this field to comment on this, but I wanted to include it here. If you haven't seen it already, you can pause it, look through this and make your own 
uh, make your own decisions from that. We're at timestamp 1410 now in the character creation segment, and I missed this the first time through. I was looking at the character creator, but just wanted to come back and see it uh, here under mouth. Of course, we have our different presets that you can look through here, but even from there, it looks like they're going to give you uh, even sub design to where from the kind of preset that you get here, you can go ahead and shape it through some other um, variables here from underbite to overbite to scaling up and scaling down. I just thought this was a neat little thing that I missed the first time. And I think it's just another kind of point in the basket for Starfield for making a great character creator. I'm really excited to get my hands on this. At timestamp 421, here we are in our data menu in our character section. And we can see down at the very bottom that we have the ability to hide our spacesuit in settlements. And so if you spend a lot of time working on your avatar and you want it to look a certain way, uh, not just in your facial um, features, but also the clothing that you wear, you can easily hide that when you're in kind of a breathable environment. So uh, you don't have to go through the menu to take your suit off and put your clothes on and all that. So I think that again, that's just a nice uh, uh, quality of life feature. Here I have another screenshot for you. Someone found in, in our Discord that as you were scanning um, uh, a fauna or flora, that one of the resources was pigment. And then they connected this, uh, this timestamp at, what is this, at 1317, when you're kind of waking up, uh, going into your character creation. Uh, they, didn't, they noted that, yeah, sorry, <laughs> they noted that uh, here we have the same spacesuit here, but this guy has kind of like an orange or a gold color around his neck piece. And this one is more kind of a gray uh, or, or maybe black, depending on kind of how that light is hitting it. Uh, but they said this is an example of how you can uh, use this resource of pigment to come in here. And that just tells me that, well, yes, of course, we have lots of customization, but there's going to be in-game mechanics to where maybe you have to find this specific color. You have to scan this specific color uh, or the, the animal or the, the uh, uh, flora that have this specific color resource to be able to use it. Uh, maybe we'll get like a few kind of basic ones to start with, but then above and beyond that, it, as just kind of an incentive and a reward for those who want to go exploring, maybe we'll get a lot of other pigments and a lot of other colors to use. Another screenshot here, again, sorry, I couldn't find this in, in, in a quick way. I know I've seen this, I just couldn't find it in here. Uh, but this guy has a trucker hat on that has this animal on there. And then here we also see in the gameplay where this animal was, I think, uh, hunted by this by this hunter guy here. And so that's just like a cool thing that, again, kind of lots of uh, lots of consistency in the gameplay design, which is really cool. Another screenshot for you here. Uh, one of our discord members found this flamethrower arm that looks like it could be attached to a mech. So that's exciting because we haven't seen any kind of customization just yet of Vosco. But this alludes to the fact that maybe there are weapons and tools and different pieces of equipment that we could find or even make through the crafting and then uh, put that onto Vasco, depending on what we need him for for our mission. If we need him for mining, if we need him for combat, we have a little bit of customization there. At timestamp 1234, we get another shot of the uh, data menu here. And specifically here we see one, two, three, four, five, six different sub menus that we could potentially go into. And I know this is sort of common. Lots of people have seen this, uh, but I did want to kind of make note of this, not as a new find, but just as a, as a commentary on this. So lots of people think this sixth menu right here at the top could be uh, what are, what lots of people are referring to as space magic. Remember at the end of the direct where we see the character stretch out his hand, do some sort of what looks to be like a gravitational effect and then the, the other NPCs that you're fighting go limp and their guns disappear and they just kind of float in the sky. This could be the sub menu to get into those specific skills. And that's the thing that I wanted to pull out here is if we're getting a whole sub menu for this space magic, again, that's, that's a very non clever way to describe it. Excuse me. But that means that there could be lots of different options within that specific skill set. So if it's based in gravity, there could be, you know, think about Mass Effect, there could be push, pull, singularity, um, lots of things that they explored there in Mass Effect. We could even get the ability to create uh, some sort of gravitational shield around ourselves. 
Um, we could uh, get maybe the ability to blink, kind of like move forward. I think that was some sort of shout in uh, in in Skyrim. At timestamp 1720, we see uh, developer Dane Olds here. And uh, this was probably one of my favorite developers from the Direct. He just seemed like he had a really cool vibe about him. Also, he designs the weapons, right? So that's really cool. And in that regard, look at this back here. It looks like he has a real life model of what some people think is the Grindel weapon, uh, like a submachine gun. So very cool, Dane. We need to see some more shots of that after the game releases and you don't have to worry about secrecy as much. That is really cool. Now we're in our shipbuilding section of the Direct and here at timestamp, what is this? This is timestamp 2115. Uh, we see the Frontier here, which looks to be like kind of the default starting build for the Frontier. Notice the value down here, 7375. That's not a lot, especially in context of what we've seen other uh, guns and, and items that we've found their value throughout the Direct, if you look in, in the, the menu when it pops up. Um, so this is just another example of how, you know, if a lot of you who are like, hey, I want to build a big economy and I want to just go and, and, you know, sell all my spaceships and still spaceships and sell them, it looks like they're going to have kind of an, a, a neat way to kind of prevent you from doing that not in a way that is makes it not fun but in a way that kind of makes it where you got to work a little bit harder to start making some cash you can't just go and sell off uh, your frontier because if it's used and it's damaged and uh, you, you 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 know it's not like brand new then it may not have the kind of value that you're you're expecting it to have and also on that note, uh, notice here that it says registered, so the Frontier is registered. Uh, I remember specifically Todd Howard saying in, I think, the Kind of Funny interview when they were talking about ships and building economies, uh, he said, okay, you, you know, you, they wanted to make sure that you couldn't kind of abuse that system and go steal a ship and bring it in then just sell it or scrap it for parts, that you do have to register it to be able to kind of get into the customization options and most likely to be able to sell it at you know a, 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 a some sort of massive profit as well and it's going to cost money credits to register those ships and so it sounds like they've thought about this uh, they may do a little bit of balancing after launch but i'm particularly excited to get into this element of the game okay this is i think a common one that is out there and people have talked about but i i never actually saw a screenshot of this until someone in our discord shared it so uh rage quit is right here uh in your dog store and your dog star console in your ship and i'm unsure if that's actually like a hey an eject button of some sort or if it's just like a just a funny little nod to gaming right and this is at timestamp 3016. I don't think I said that. Here we're back to the star yard section that where we were earlier to find that poster. And just a quick note that we see uh, Demos here. Uh, Demos, or maybe Demos, you guys give me a hard time for how I pronounce things. Please excuse me. It's not a word I use every single day. Um, but this is, um, we've seen this before. This is a manufacturer in, uh, in Starfield. And so they make ship parts. Um, but we also know that, I, well, I didn't know this. Someone told me that this is the name of one of the two moons of Mars. So this could be, you know, if we think about Mars, evidently has a lot to do with the, the lore of Starfield. Deimos could have been one of the first manufacturers to start producing ship parts to go out into the cosmos and explore even more uh, if they originated on Mars. So that's just a cool little Easter egg, I think. At timestamp 43, we have this little scene. And you know, I didn't realize the first time I saw this, maybe this is very obvious to everyone else, but just because I was trying to take everything in, this is an example of what, of how their procedural generation system can work. This, um, this developer is talking about how you can go to, you know, a, a planet and have completely different experiences. And so here it shows uh, this uh, kind of what looks to be, oh, it kind of reminds me of like the, the Fortress of Solitude, right? From like Superman lore, uh, like crystals everywhere. Um, and then it kind of does this cool transition and it's a different structure here. It's to be, I don't know what that would be, maybe some sort of science outpost. Could be a lot of different things but that is what i wanted to note here that that's a cool little way to show how you could be in the exact same place as one of your buddies or one of your friends and have a completely different experience in that regard um also note that you know they did it does look like the same 
terrain here, right? Like you have the lakes and the mountains um, and, you know, the, uh, the uh, creatures and the same kind of uh, biome here. But as you go through, the only thing that's different is that structure. So that gives us a little bit of hint into how this procedural generation system is actually going to work. I know there's a lot of conversation about that, uh, but that's just another little glimpse into that way that the game works. And the last little detail that I wanted just to, to show is this shot right here at timestamp 4236. This just gave me real big Stranger Things vibe. Uh, if you're not a fan of Stranger Things, you don't watch that, it's a great it's a great show on Netflix. It's about kind of run its course, I think, but I think they do have one more season left in them. But this just gave me a huge Stranger Things vibe, which I'm a big fan of, so pretty cool. It also looks like, you know, with the kind of the pink and purple sky and haze in the atmosphere, this could be an example of a biome or a specific planet where you have to have certain gear to be able to survive in it, or you, your ship has to have certain filters on it to be able to land in it safely. Now let's move on to the mistakes that I found and a quick note on this. This is not to criticize the developers. They have made this massive game and put so much effort into this. This is not to criticize them. This is mainly just kind of a, a point of fun and little Easter eggs for all of us diehard Starfield fans that are still watching at this point. So it's not to criticize them, just fun little things for us to notice. The first mistake we'll look at is at timestamp 4007, uh, where this uh, NPC is holding this gun and you see the handle right here, but his hand is kind of holding up right here, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Sometimes you can hold guns in different ways, but his thumb is clipping through the gun right there. So very, very small mistake. Again, not a criticism, just a fun little Easter egg for us hardcore fans. The next mistake is at timestamp 4105, and you have to go pretty much frame by frame to see it, but this is where uh, we're striking an NPC with uh, an enemy with our samurai sword, and you see right here, it clips out of our player character's hand for just, just a frame. It's back in it there. It clipped out, it's in, right, clipped out, and then it's back in. At timestamp 3911, we get a good glimpse of this gun. And I think I even noted this in one of my combat uh, videos, but I completely missed or even like, you know, just corrected for it in my mind. But it doesn't say state of the art right here. I'll try to zoom in for you in post, but it says state of the at. And one of my Discord members said they must be from Boston. State of the at. That's my horrible Boston accent. I'm sorry. I'll stick with the Southern accent. Sorry. At timestamp 3003, we actually get a really interesting one. Um, I'm not sure if this is a mistake or it alludes to something else going on here, but we see we have a, we're in kind of this uh, dogfight here, and the uh, ships in red are in combat with us. So we have the UC Dagger here and the Freestar Caravan 3 here. Then we have the UC Discovery over here and something else going on there. But the thing we wanted to note is this notice, okay, so you see discovery we are not in combat with it has uc discovery and it also has the emblem for uc but then here we have free star caravan we have the free star symbol but then we look over here we have the uc dagger but this has the free star emblem on it so it's a uc ship with a free star emblem this could be a mistake or this could allude to something cool like well a Freestar rogue agent went and stole a UC ship and we're partnering with the UC to go and get it back. That's why we're in combat with both of these here. Maybe. Again, this one came from our Discord at timestamp 2941. We see the planet uh, Kazal and we see here that it has a sulfur mine on it as a point of interest as somewhere where, where we could land and do a mission. Um, but notice over here in the resources, sulfur is not listed. Maybe this may be a mistake or it may be that the resource and the trait system in Starfield is not necessarily linked to the procedural generation of, of sites and, uh, and of areas and special places of note. Or it could be that, well, maybe 
sulfur isn't actually technically like a resource that you could use that would matter in in the game system but then why would they include it as a point of interest i don't know seems like it could be a mistake could be a neat little lore thing going on or maybe it's just a gameplay mechanic uh issue uh but nonetheless suspicious Okay, we're getting really nitpicky here, but it is uh, maybe a little mistake nonetheless. At uh, timestamp 714, we see one of our first looks of New Atlantis, and specifically here, let me just play it for you. Okay, what it's really hard to see, especially when someone's just playing it right here, but notice this NPC right down here. He's walking very closely to this NPC in front of him and his pathing is kind of getting blocked so he's doing like a little bit of stuttering kind of what we've seen before in Skyrim and in Fallout where someone's trying to get somewhere and they can't quite get there it's, it has that stuttering effect watch one more time just a little bit not much Tiny, tiny little nitpicky thing, but someone mentioned it, so thanks for thanks for calling that out in Discord. At timestamp 338, we are in our the the first little glimpse of combat we get, and uh, someone mentioned that this looked like a mistake, or maybe it's something else. Let's see our gun come out, and right here we fire our first shot. And even though we see the even though we see the cursor the reticule on on the, the the enemy here he just noted that our gun was facing way down here and doesn't look like it's actually pointing to to the enemy here and uh, he said well this looks like a mistake or maybe something was coded in to kind of make it look like this player was playing better than than they actually were in for the gameplay footage uh, this also could be you know i know as developers they have all these little tricks to help us feel as players like hey we're awesome right they want us to feel like we're having fun they want us to feel like we're really good so this could just be like a little bit of a bullet tracking system in starfield uh, to help you with combat if they did include this in combat they most likely included a way whether it's through the difficulty level or another uh, feature that you can that you can change they probably made a way for you to either turn this off or or lessen it in some way for those who want a better challenge and i have one more bonus mistake for you at timestamp 849 and uh, I, the reason i put this last is again i'm not sure if it's a mistake per se or just a choice that the, the developers had to make to get kind of everything fit in here but notice in this scene where we're in we're in constellations headquarters we're around this um this uh, kind of grav map table or this uh, interactable table with a glass top notice the people are not included in the reflections and i'm just going to play through the scene and just kind of watch The, play, the characters are not in those reflections. And also notice, as we play through, there's like a little stutter. Do you see that? You see those three stutters it has there? That's because those reflections are not updating at the 30 frames per second that everything else is. So everything else is 30 frames per second over here. This is updating at either I don't know, it looked like maybe 10 frames per second or something like that, or maybe once every 10 frames. It was significantly lower. Now, I'm not smart enough to really understand this or why they did this or if this is going to be updated to be better, but uh, Digital Foundry did an incredible job of breaking this down. Just search for Starfield Digital Foundry, and you'll find that uh, they did a terrific job. Very smart guys over there. I always enjoy watching them. Thank you so much for watching. A quick reminder to like the video, and if you've really enjoyed the video or you're enjoying our channel, consider subscribing. We would love for you to join the Signal crew, and a big thank you to our patrons and our YouTube channel members. They get some really cool perks by supporting the channel financially. If you're interested in that, you can check that out in the links in the description. We'd love for you to join us. This has just been an incredible journey. Starfield is coming. I'm excited. I know you all are too. Thank you for coming along the journey uh, with me and with our Signal crew. But for now, may you find wonder as you journey through the stars.